We're in North Myrtle Beach at the business known as the Sign Man. Now this business has been here over 30 years. It's at 18th Avenue South in North Myrtle Beach and this is the Sign Man. But he's an artist, even better than making signs. You are an incredible artist. Meet Steve Jamison. He goes by the name Cedar on all of his artwork and he is just terrific. I chose you, Steve, to feature today because I love your work. I'm intrigued you. that an artist like you can do watercolor, oils, and palette knife equally as well. You yeah. do it all. Yeah, I like to play around with all of it. I like all kinds of design, yeah. How did you start out? My earliest memory myself, I was probably about four or five years old and I had an aunt who worked at the ice cream factory in town. And she walked home past my grandmother's house every day after work. And she would bring me uh, little white cardboard sleeves from inside the ice cream packages. And um, it must have been Groundhog's Day because I drew a picture of Mr. Groundhog. And everybody loved it. I did like Mr. Groundhog Goes to Town. He was dressed up in a top hat and vest. Everybody loved it and I had fun doing it. So the next day she brought me more cardboard and I did Mr. Groundhog in his pajamas. And <laughs> everybody liked that. <laughs> so I did a whole series of Mr. Groundhog pictures. But yeah. look at this studio. It is just beautiful. And Thank every you. bit of Steve's work is so unique. His biggest thing right now <clears throat> though is Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach, of course, cottages. Steve, take us from a start to finish. Let's take this house. Tell me how you photographed this house and the process you went through to get to the final piece. Okay, well, when I'm driving around, I see old beach houses that I like. Um, I'm really drawn to them and there's fewer and fewer left. So this one house I had been seeing for several years and uh, they were starting to build high-rise condominiums all around it, but they had left this house. It was painted wild, crazy colors. So I decided this would be my next uh, subject to paint. And uh, first, I went there early morning when the sun is low at an interesting angle, so it'll throw interesting light and shadows on the building. I took photographs from different angles. Then I took these photographs and chose which one I liked the best. And uh, actually, I think I decided to put the ocean behind the building, but in reality, it was behind me. So I have this picture. I feed it through uh, Photoshop, which I've learned how to play with, and bumped up the colors, edited things in and out, then projected that image onto a canvas. And uh, I like to paint the canvas a vermilion color background first. Um, it kind of pulls the whole painting together to have one whole color that colors the canvas. White isn't very interesting to But it makes at. the house pop as well. Yeah, and then when you see, when you're doing a palette knife, you're going to have canvas showing here and there. I like to be able to see the structure of a painting. That seems to be something that everybody likes these days is a deconstructed look. And uh, we appreciate that, whereas in the past, people liked fine art, had to be, you know, perfect, smooth. You don't see how the underpinnings are. Now people enjoy that, I like it. So I would uh, like to have a vermilion canvas because it reflects the sunset and it's more interesting to look at than white. So then I paint all the uh, color on top of that, leaving little cracks and pieces here and there where you can see the vermilion showing through. You have different size knives as well. And um, so with yeah. the palette knife, you're able to um, almost like carve into the paint. You use a lot yeah. of paint, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of tubes of paint down here. Um, use a lot of paint on a palette knife and I like it to be wet and squishy like um, butter. It's, it's like putting frosting on a cake or decorating frosting on a cookie. Uh, once the paint starts to get a skin on it and dry after a day or two, it's not as much fun to work with. So I try to get it all done really quick in one day to get all that color blending together. How long does it take for something like this to dry? Oh, yeah. It's thick and beautiful. Can't send it to the gallery right away. No. <laughs> it takes at least a month, maybe six weeks. Yeah, yeah. But I love your palette knife work. Thank I mean, you. the oils are great, the watercolor is great, but the palette knife, I don't know. I think it adds a lot to the beach and the texture of the beach. Well, also, I think the texture in it is decorative. I've given a few to my mom 
to put in her living room. And my mom l really likes gold and cut crystal. And so when you have one of these palette knives on the wall with a, a light on it, it, it looks, it's got carved edges in it that reflect the light and it's decorative looking. So it's kind of sparkly and exciting to look at. You've won a lot of awards. Um, I know that you're one of the few, um, I think there's like less than 800 people, members of the Watercolor Society on a national level, and you're yeah. one of them, but yeah. you've won some awards. Come on, don't be modest, brag. Well, when I first started learning watercolors about 10 years ago, uh, somehow I got a competitive urge in me, so I started sending them off to uh, different states to win, see if I could win competitions, um, trying to develop myself, get to be better, uh, compete with the other artists. And um, the funny thing is, when you send a slide of your work and you're accepted into one of these watercolor society shows, they will kick you out of society if you don't send the painting, if you're accepted. But then uh, I was trying to get all these different awards, and, and I was, but on the state levels, but the National Watercolor Society is the, one of the hardest to get into. There's the American Watercolor Society and the National. And when you can get into that, you can put NWS after your signature on the painting, which makes it more valuable to buyers. And um, the P it says national, but it's actually people from all over the world. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of really good painters in China, in the Orient, in England. They love watercolor. So it's people all over the world. And uh, I did win quite a few dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of awards. But finally, after 10 years, I did get accepted in the National Watercolor Society. So Awesome. Yeah. And now I'm not so interested in competing right now. Now, so. where's this name Cedar come in? I've always loved cedar trees. I grew up in Kentucky and they were everywhere. They grow wild along the fence rows. I, I don't know why I love them. My father carved cedar trees when he would make jewelry boxes for my mom. I loved the smell of the cedar. I felt like I needed a name for myself. I really don't know how. I, you just I didn't want to sign it. Steve Jameson on your painting, so you signed Cedar. Yeah, like I was telling you earlier, <laughs> Steve Jameson doesn't sound like an artist. It sounds like a banker or an accountant. <laughs> Cedar does I just don't sound, see Steve Jameson. Cedar sounds pretty <laughs> impressive. Now, I know you have this wonderful goal of having your own TV show, kind of like Bob Ross did many yeah, years ago, yeah. where you'd have a whole series of teaching people how to paint. I think it's a great idea, and I don't want you to give up on that dream. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, because I think that would, um, I mean, from my own point of view, that would help get my artwork out there so that galleries might want it and I might be able to sell it. You know, I've spent my whole life expressing myself through painting, and I'm not a very public person. Uh, I've learned how to be public through my sign business and working with customers and enjoying interacting with them. But I've spent most of my life expressing myself in quiet on my own. To be in front of a TV camera and I have to become the brush, the canvas, that's a huge new challenge for me. I, that, so I'm kind of titillated by the idea because it seems so difficult for me. Um, and I'm, I'm a little bit intimidated too. And finally, I've got to ask you one more thing because I know that you're very active here in the Maya Baba Center uh -huh. and you are the number one Baba artist in the world. I, I think that I may be selling more work in the Baba community than anyone else. There's, it's there's quite a few of us. Um, my style of illustrating Baba is a little bit different than um, some. Um, what I discovered with Baba that's different from any other spiritual teacher that I know of is that he's really known for his sense of humor. And finally, mm. we've got a lot of people who still can come by here and purchase signs for their house. And you still do that? Yeah, I'm still here making signs for people's homes, uh, some beach houses. I send signs all over the world, uh, handmade, custom, carved, illustrated, residential signs. And you've been here for how long? Since 1983. Wow, wow. I thought I would be here about five years and then go work for Walt Disney, but I'm still here. Steve, I'll tell you what, you are just a great artist and I hope that folks will stop by the Sign Man here in North Myrtle Beach and visit with Steve. Whether you need signs or beautiful artwork for your wall, reach out to Cedar.